I'm feeling ambitious, I'm feeling articulate, and I'm ready to go. Because we're going to be talking about... What are we talking about? I forgot. Oh, oh my god, we're talking about the crucible. Oh my god. Oh my god, okay. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, we're talking about the crucible today. But first, I need to talk to you about Miyazaki's entire anthology of games. For me to make sense. I am going to put a timestamp in this. So y'all who are just curious on my take on what the Crucible is, you can just jump to that. But for those of you that want to take this journey with me and really truly understanding how I came to the conclusion I did, hop in. Buckle up. Because we're, we're just going to go down memory lane real quick. Um, and I'm also going to talk about a little mythology, and it's going to be fun, so stick around. With that being said, I want to make a disclaimer, and I hope my editor puts in something here so I don't look like I'm just doing like a dumb gesture. This is the disclaimer alert! Um, I... I'm here to tell you that even though that there are overlapping symbols and themes and objects, characters, whatever, I don't think that Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and Elden Ring are all part of this like intersecting multiverse. Um, I just don't. I feel like there are a lot of overlapping themes and philosophical connections. I feel like this is Miyazaki iterating on this world that he's building and exploring the cycle of life and death and conflict over and over and over again. I feel like also it's really beautiful to see the first kind of like iterations of his work and then like the later iterations and how much more sophisticated they get, how much more fleshed out they get, and also like the art team and the environmental designers like knock it out of the park by Dark Souls 3. The vistas and the way that like the camera kind of like zooms the background into the foreground so we get this like really beautiful overlay of like everything. It really allows us to see the details of the world in a way that wasn't possible with Dark Souls 1 um, because I sure as hell didn't fucking know that the Kiln of the First Flame was sitting on top of a fucking tree, y'all. I didn't know that until I saw Illusionary Walls video like a long time ago, but I didn't know that. How was I supposed to know that? until Dark Souls 3. <laughs> um, but that being said, um, I want to mention that, yeah, I don't think any of these are connected, like, whatsoever. Don't think that there's the interconnecting multiverse, because if there was, that would mean Patches is flying a mech and is a spider, and I can't emphasize that enough. I just, like, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, so, let's go. Let's get into it. Um, we're gonna start off with my favorite game, yeah. and it's Demon Souls, which is a hot take because a lot of people's is Dark Souls. Um, but Demon Souls is a special place in my heart. It was a PlayStation exclusive, so not a lot of people have played it. Um, similar to Bloodborne, however, it did get a remake, but only for PlayStation Five. So it, it's just really not super accessible. I understand the story hasn't reached too many people. Spark Notes version, a old king decides to sell his soul to a demon to rid the world of mankind's corruption. And Miyazaki at this point, this is fairly early on in this like, uh, like what, a uh, Western fantasy myth adventure. And he was kind of throwing Ooh. spaghetti on the wall Ooh. and seeing what stuck. And what stuck was this big, beautiful meatball. And that meatball was the old one. Mm. He's kind of like our first little outer god, but like a demon, like an ancient demon, maybe like a lesser key of Solomon, like definitely like a Paimon. You know, we love we love a Paimon. He was like supposed to be this big celestial cosmic tree that housed this soul of this like primordial demon. Like I mentioned before, King Alant sold his soul to this this big old meatball because he was wanting to rid mankind of of corruption whatever dude it was just an excuse because you literally didn't want to take responsibility for your bad 
political policies that fucked over your rule. That's not my problem, but I'm here anyway, so whatever. Um, but as an adventurer who's fixing everything for this guy, um, you are accompanied by your own little candle maiden. <laughs> and her name is the Maiden in Black. And she has this really beautiful scene at the end of the game in the back of the old one's body. We actually have to enter it. We go in through its little mouth. Um, but in the back of the old one's body is this little cradle that houses this white fire that is the soul of the old one. And she goes in the back with you and she like lulls the old one back to slumber. <laughs> and there's like a different endings you can get. You can either kill the maiden in black and take the old one's soul for yourself and get like an abundance of souls, or you can um, you can just let her kind of lull it back to sleep and then you get to enter New Game Plus and woohoo! Um, but it introduces um, kind of like this big tree that is this primordial aspect of the world. It introduces souls being depicted as little fireballs this fire. Um, there's actually different colored fire for like different kinds of souls too. And um, it introduces, I forget the word, it's like transmogrification. I hope I'm saying that right, fuck. Um, of demon souls being able to be turned into spells or metal or like um, miracles or whatever. Um, so we have this transition of, of a spirit or a soul being put into something um and when we read about it we get to see the story or like the memory or the experiences um when we also use the demon souls items we get experience points as well um so we have this like image of fire being our experiences and being our influence and our power and then we have this other aspect that is um called our character tendency and that is um kind of changed or influenced by our behavior as a player. So there are these two different aspects to ourself. Um, I feel like by Dark Souls 1, tendency was replaced with the humanity function. And um, it's not necessarily like a granular like karma function. Like you are more good or you are more evil or you are neutral. Like I don't think it wasn't like that. It's more just like how much humanity you have influences the fire of chaos and i'll get into that when i get into the dark soul section but there are some things that he iterated and then he changed right um but we still have the souls being depicted as fire we still have the souls being nurtured and like put inside of like this big tree like there's this big source of souls and when it's inside of the tree or the old one it influences the fabric of reality and he actually causes reality to become so fucked up and wild um the spread of demons became unstoppable that there are these characters called the monumentals and they try to break the fabric of reality apart in order to quarantine off the spread of this influence however this quarantine doesn't work and it still spreads no matter what <clears throat> um so we have just a lot of these little pieces that miyazaki's kind of like sprinkling into his oh. game and we start to see them come over when he makes dark souls Sure enough, we see our good old tree again, but this time it's stationary. It's not like a sentient outer god or being. Um, we have our kiln of the first flame, which houses the flame of lords. Um, so it's very similar to how King Alant's flame, or like King Alant was inside of the old one, like flailing around, but it's really similar to how the old one's flame was kind of like sitting in the back of this tree and it was really like shaping the world. It's that same kind of visual imagery that's popping up. The difference is that it's now housed inside of a kiln. But something that's really interesting about the kiln that is very difficult to make out when you play through the game because of the technological limitations is that this kiln is actually sitting on top of a tree. There are roots here that go like this. Um, and there is like a big brassier. I keep thinking I'm saying like bra or something. You know what I mean? Like a big, you know, like in Mulan when the guy like puts the torch and he's like, now all of China knows you're here. That's like, that is what this looks like. It's like a big dome bowl situation that the kiln sits inside of. Um, and then the flame is like, wee, it's like right here. And then we find also too that there is a dome shaped kiln. This is called a beehive kiln down in Isolith. Where are you? Beehive kiln looks like this. This is what a beehive kiln looks like. 
And we find out that Isolith, like through the series of the game, so hold on, let me backtrack. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There is a lord named Gwen, and he has a fire, and his age of fire is slowly burning out, and he wants to keep it going. And he finds out that humanity is pretty fucking flammable. He's a god though, so he doesn't have it. But we do, and we're humans. And sure enough, it turns out that um, through a curse and through some other shit that Gwyn was kind of manipulating the undead and all Father Lloyd was absolutely hunting the undead for their humanity and for bone shards. They act as kindling and they prolong the age of fire. However, it was inevitable that it was going to end and sure enough, Gwyn is confronted with that and that's kind of like the central conflict of the story. But we also have this character, Isolith, who decides that down in this little kiln that she's got going on down in the Undercity, that she wants to recreate or create a flame. Some people say that she wanted to specifically create her own flame of chaos. Some people believe that she was trying to recreate Gwyn's flame. Either way, she was trying to create a flame and it went wild. Um, it it went so wild that it actually caused a big fucking fracture in her kiln and we actually enter through the crack. Um, also thank you both Crestfallen and Illusionary Wall for um, Crestfallen. This is like from his uh, camera video like exploring the kiln of the first time. He was the one that that kind of shows off like the root system of like the, the kiln and then um, this is from Illusionary Wall's video where he the dissecting Dark Souls, episode nine, I think. So there's definitely some evidence that this flame kind of wasn't anticipated because I feel like there would have been precautions. Like the fact that that fracture is there, the fact that Gwyn's boys are like going down to intercept the demons, the fact that, um, you know, uh, Quaylog's sister is like suffering and there seems to be some kind of like tragedy or like tragedy tragic emotional reaction to what's happening, it really does feel like um, this perhaps maybe wasn't intended, but that is that is totally interpretive. I'm just pulling shit out of my ass right now and rambling. You don't, you don't have to feel that way. You could absolutely feel that she um, was intentionally making the Flame of Chaos. Um, something really cool about her design too that shows that it could be intentional is that she has these little like bug, I mean, you could say they're like praying mantis situations. Um, she almost got like scythes like she's going to reap the roots of the tree like she's she's fucking coming for the the world tree right now so like i mentioned humanity acts as like kind of like coal or like charcoal like fuel um in the dlc he introduces the fact that humanity can grow wild that if it's not dealt with or controlled it can become frenzied and i almost feel like humanity is really similar to um like fire just in general and how it's used in elden ring because there's this very like creative force of an age and i think also that's why we have like a kiln as um like a symbol for what houses the fire is a kiln is used to like create something like if you make something out of clay you have to fire it in a kiln for it to become hard or if you're glazing something you have to fire it in a kiln for it to become fully glazed and for it to settle so it's almost like you are putting something in it and it's like a transformative experience that pulls something that you've created out of it. So it's almost like you put your will into the kiln and it brings out your influence onto the world. Like you are shaping the world, you're, you're making the world reflect your age. It is like this big creative, beautiful imagery going on here. But sometimes your ambition can be a little bit too much and it seems like humans are are um, oftentimes victims of that. We have Manus, whose humanity went crazy. Um, the Four Kings have this like really beautiful, um, it kind of like right where the dark sign should be. It almost looks like he's like erupting outwards, um, almost as like a tree of some sort. And then um, we just have we just have all these like symbols of kind of like our this is the dark side this is unrelated ignore this shit ignore that um but we just have we have a lot of really beautiful um i also love to manis's hand being like the thing that went crazy because he's like searching for his pendant and he's able to reach through time to grab you and pull you back into the past 
it's almost like he was searching through time and space for this pendant like that's how important it was to him um and so i oftentimes see humanity to be synonymous with like it's like you got your will and and whatever but i almost just feel like it's like emotional tension like very extreme frenzied emotional tension or trauma and i feel that way too about um the demon of hatred in sekiro he's the sculptor initially he went through war he was struggling with trauma and with his emotions and feelings about his nation and like it's it's um fixation with immortality and and all the wars that he had to fight and there was just a lot going on internally with that character and he severed his arm so that way he wouldn't succumb to his wrath or his rage and even though his arm is severed it grows back in this big pillar of fire um so there's kind of like that very like frenzied emotional reaction that's like happening with this boss design um and i love i love the language that he's using here <laughs> it's like really really cool um so we see this again in dark souls 2 i'm not gonna get super into dark souls 2 um but i will say that so that there's aldia he's just trying to recreate the circumstances of dark souls 1 there's a lot of reincarnated gods and lords from dark souls 1 who are in 2 and aldia specifically is researching all of the conditions of the world and the setting in one so that way he can try to like copy it and like remake it um and then uh the kiln is at the end is like where we sit on the throne sure enough it's another kiln um, so we see that same symbolism, but something that's really interesting about Dark Souls 2 that I love because we see it in Elden Ring is this introduction of fire and ice. And it's important because in Norse mythology, fire and ice are the two components that are the creation of the universe. Um, they create the, the relationship between the two and the disparity between the two causes the creation of the universe. So I, I love that. I love that we are starting to see that now because that, that comes back later. <laughs> Um, so Dark Souls 3, we have, um, you know, we learn, we learn a lot of shit, um, but we also get this really beautiful upgraded version of the Kiln of the First Flame. It was really difficult for us to make out the tree parts of it in Dark Souls 1, but now in Dark Souls 3 they went all in to make sure that you knew that this was a fucking tree. And, um, this is still a Kiln of the First Flame. I'm assuming that there's, like, supposed to be... I don't know, the Kiln of the First Flame in Dark Souls 1 doesn't have a roof either. Um, but something that is interesting about the Dark Souls 3 Kiln is that there's this image here, and it looks really similar to the Berserk Eclipse. It obviously looks like an eclipse. Um, it looks like the eclipse mentioned in Elden Ring too. But this is also a Crucible. Now, a Crucible is a type of pot that is heat resistant that holds metal or whatever thing you're you're smelting um inside of it and cooper big snore <laughs> so this is like a little crucible pot right here this is what's holding the new age of man, of mankind, or gods. And then this right here is what's called a... Oh my god, Cooper. <laughs> the snores are real. This is what's called a vacuum crucible, and it is able to smelt and pour as if it's a crucible itself, like it's a container. But you're able to put it inside of a smelter to melt the metal, and then you pour the crucible into a smaller crucible. So there's a transference of energy and of like power um, and of fire and of melted metal. The metal portion of it doesn't, it kind of pops up in Dark Souls 2 a little bit, but it really shines in Elden Ring with Marika's Age of Gold or the Golden Order. Um, and that's where it really like, I feel like Miyazaki did it. Like he was really able to make all of his elements come together. Um, with both the blacksmithing and this like big divine tree and the tree representing the spread of this age um, and I kind of want to talk about like the root systems and stuff too so there are certain trees that all share a singular root system 
and all of these trees on the surface would all be the same tree because they all all share a root system down here. Um, these are aspen. I grew up near some of these and they actually would like kind of live in big chunks and they would all change color around like the same time. It was really interesting to watch um, as you can kind of see like how big their little like tree colonies were. It was it was really cool and their leaves get really yellow like the Erd tree. It's wild. Um, they're definitely not as like thick as the Erd tree though but that that could be another thing too. That could be dragon scales, but I'll get into that in another video. Segway, getting distracted, come on. We see these like little tree sprouts kind of popping up next to areas that are kind of developing their own age, which is interesting. So the Erd tree has its minor Erd trees that share its root system. The Knight, um, the Nox are trying to create their Lord of Night and they have these pillars that are starting to branch up. They're still very like small. They're not quite there yet, but they're getting there. Uh -huh. And then the halig tree, the halig tree is so close. This isn't the halig tree itself, um, but it's one of the trees that's blossoming next to the halig tree. But the halig tree has so many pillars. The halig tree is like almost more abundant than the herd tree. It's kind of wild um, how much like further along it was than the herd tree. It wasn't like fully finished, but like it had so much. <laughs> it had so, it's kind of, like nutty to think about if Mikella was able to finish what um they set out to do it would have been it would have been bonkers that being said i i found like okay we're getting that tree imagery again of like the lord's soul being put inside of the tree right like marika is inside of the tree and like this is this goes back to dark souls this goes back to demon souls we're putting the influence of our lords our kings whatever our gods inside of the tree and then we're getting kind of the blacksmithing stuff from dark souls 3 with this mention of the crucible of life and there's a bunch of different ways that the crucible's been interpreted and i'll get into that soon but um something that dude man guy on youtube brought up he did this really great video about japanese translations um and the word crucible specifically is about um like the crucible of life is uh from sorry i can't my brain comes from a word um in japanese that's rutsubo which is um rutsubo. like pot it is it is literally a crucible pot it's a it's one of these that i just showed you an image of this is a crucible this is a crucible fuck shit that was it the whole time so why is this important? <laughs> because it also keeps saying over and over and over again, whether or not you feel so like there's conflict also with the Japanese translation side of the community where Miyazaki's writing, um, he has like a very interesting writing style where he uses very like kind of older formal styles of writing. I believe that there's like certain, is it like certain kanji or something that's like very particular to a certain age or like dialect i don't know i don't know anything about japanese i don't know what i'm saying but i read that fucking reddit post <laughs> and the consensus is that it was saying that the great tree is no longer connected to the deep roots or some roots that's kind of like the interpretation that people have come to and they say there is no great tree there was never a great tree it doesn't exist um the earth tree is just the earth tree and the great tree is only mentioned in like two or three items. However, however, hmm. what is mentioned is the primordial versions or the primordial vestiges of the earth tree, which states that there is an earlier version of the earth tree. And that earth tree was more associated with the color red. This is very important because Godwin's Crucible Night, or what am I saying? Fuck, not Godwin. Godfrey. Godfrey. Godfrey's Crucible Nights um, are in primordial gold armor. And it's saying that red tinted gold armor is primordial gold. And it got me thinking about trees in general and just the nature of trees. And I bring this up again because I feel like somebody's age like if we think about the symbolism of a tree being represented 
or a tree being like the cradle of an age of fire, like holding the fire of, of a king. I find it super eloquent that tree would be like a perfect metaphor for that because say if you have an Erd tree and you give birth to people and they get their like minor Erd trees, um, it's like if your tree dies, you're literally passing on your legacy through your like family trees in a way. Um, but trees are also really like a beautiful symbol because um, kingdoms can be passed on in a multiple multitude of ways. Do you know what I mean? It can be passed on through these little offspring or trees can be cut off. Trees can be set on fire. Trees can be, you know, like absorb other cultures or absor absorb other nutrients from their surroundings. Um, so I feel like the way in which a tree can end or like die or change or grow is just like a really beautiful analogy for like how human societies kind of change hands and grow. There's I, a lot of people have mentioned that there's like a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of Celtic and Norse like imagery going on in the series. Um, but there's also a lot of Catholic and Latin um, imagery going on in the series. And for anybody that is like a history buff, y'all know the history between Catholicism and um, the Irish and um, like Scandinavian cultures. There was a lot of attempts of assimilation and the spread that wasn't necessarily so like accepted and there was a lot of fighting and there was just a lot and when you are assimilating like other cultures into your belief system it's almost like you are you are changing them you are like cutting them off you are there's all this like manipulation that's happening and it's really cool because there's this language there's this really colorful language that Miyazaki uses in order to um like illustrate these characters and and the way in which they manipulate trees so i mentioned in my previous video like uh godric the grafted for example you can do skin grafting but it's very much a thing about trees you graft trees like that's that's a thing <laughs> and specifically fruit trees are able to take on like so many different types of species um like you can grow two different fruits on the same tree so it's very like analogous with with godric you know sticking all these different parts on himself it's 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 just like really cool to see him use all of this like colorful language and it it is a shame that like it's easy for us to lose a lot of this through the english translation um but for those of you who are great tree believers something that i personally love is that um the tree is depicted in the crucible armor multiple times and there is something down in deep root depths that is a little tree that Celeria, I don't know how to pronounce her name, this girl is protecting. She's standing in front of it and when you go inside you get the, I believe it's the crucible armor or you get her staff or she drops her staff. Um, but this tree is shaped exactly like the Erd tree in the sense that it has like a door to go inside of it. It's like hollowed out. It would be a perfect kiln or crucible. Like it would be a perfect thing to hold a flame of a lord. Um, and it's also super interesting because this tree's root systems are like all of these end. Like a lot of these look like they're cut. And they don't intersect with any of the other major root systems that go through the deep root depths. So that translation could be right. It could be saying that, um, like the way that that person translated it on Reddit, where they were saying that like, there is no gray tree. That is probably true. But I do think that there was a tree that was from a previous age that did house the Lord's souls and was a part of the root system to some degree. And I think that the Crucible Knight guarding this one, like especially one of the major ones, she's like, she's the, she's the boss. She's like really fucking important to um, Godfrey. The fact that Godfrey had this woman guarding this little tree down there is like pretty suspicious to me. I feel like this says a lot to me about 
about this like transference of, of age. Um, and something else that's really interesting if you read all of the aspects of the Crucible stuff, um, all of the Crucible talismans, it talks about how there is a primordial nature of the tree. Even in the Japanese version, it talks about the primordial form of the earth tree. Um, and it talks about how uh, this mixture of kind of like overgrown feral primordial life was seen as like holy or devout and then um, became, became seen as like uh, like barbaric and became disdained. Like it's like a vestige of like a, a time that nobody nobody likes. Nobody likes it. It's stinky as bad. I don't like it. In addition to the tree helm being super important, which is this one, the other symbol, so there's two main knights of Godfrey's like crucible knights. They're like the main ones. There's the tree knight that represents this like old tree that we we see down in the deeper depths. And then there is the axe helm, which represents um, Godfrey's weapon. Godfrey loves using axes. It represents, um, you know, Godfrey kind of leading the Crucible Knights. Like, that was his era um, to a degree. And I, I feel like um, the primeval gold, this red gold, was definitely represented. Um, we keep seeing this red of the past. Um, we keep seeing, like, ancient warriors used to go to this afterlife called Helfen, and they would see a red grace to go there. The dragons used to use red lightning. The gold used to be red-tinted gold. There is, like, this constant motif of, like, well, society used to be red, but now it's gold, like, <laughs> in all these different areas across the game. It's like not just in one specific area, it's like all over the damn place. And then also in addition to like the tree motif, um, Siluria's tree on the primordial form of the earth tree is close to nature and life itself. And the spear is modeled on its crucible. It's imbued with ancient holy essence. This and her tree stuff, like I mentioned, is found here. So if there is a great tree, I believe it would be this little tiny, scrawny, burnt, disconnected, dead-ass tree. Perfect! It kind of represents Horalu and the tribe kind of era. I don't think that the tribe people lived down in the Nameless City. I don't think that they were native to this area. The Badlands I always felt like was um, somewhere outside of the Lands Between. Correct me if I'm wrong. I actually have no clue. This is a... Uh, nameless eternal city so i feel like this is more this is more associated with the nox and the newman um it could i i personally this is like fan theory time i personally feel like this could have been marika's city that she was from if because her name is marika the eternal um and she knew the black knife assassins who were also um nox people um so it wouldn't surprise me if they were all originally from one of these eternal cities, specifically the nameless one, because it's at the, it's literally at the base of the fucking earth tree. So it makes sense that they would build the capital like above. I also kind of want to like talk a little bit. I mentioned that the earth tree was dying before, um, just kind of briefly. I talked about gold mask to some of my friends, which is why all these like scribbles are here. Gold mask made a, um, a realization that uh, Queen Marika and the gods were being very fickle and were trying to cheat death. Um, we find this not only through causality and regression, but also through order healing and litany of proper death. He finds that um, how all the learned and the learnedness to be reduced to the ravings of fanatics, all of the good and the great wanted and their foolishness was an absolute evil to contend with. Um, does such a notion exist in the fundamentals of order? And then, obviously, Marika was supposed to pass on her lineage after death, after the Erd Tree died, she was supposed to pass it on, and it just seems like she was never able to let go of her tree. And I feel like there was also some kind of disconnect or transition away from Godfrey as well during this time. And I don't know if it was intentional because she she directs him 
to be exiled so that way he can go become strong and teach the Tarnished to become strong. So it could have been, you know, Queen Marika playing 4D chess to like get us to come back and fucking kill God or some shit. But like, I don't know. She's, she is so shady. It's hard. It's hard for me to like, like when we, if we get the DLC and we get to go back in the past, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it because I have so much stuff I want to see <laughs> and talk about. Um, oh, also, a brief little thing. I have this little section that's like, why tree? Why fire? Why did he pick these symbols? I think we already kind of covered them a little bit, um, but something that I really love about these symbols that he chose particularly is that they're cross-cultural symbols. They're something that um, both are, are concepts that appear um, in all cultures all across the world and they all relatively have the same meaning which is really unique because you have all these cultures that may or may not be mingling or talking or sharing belief systems like some may be isolated but some may be like colonizing or like assimilating people it's really lovely to see that um, there is this just impression that we as humans have about certain things like obviously fire fire hurt fire owl, but fire also make food and like fire also power kilns and make technology. So a lot of um, cultures see fire as both a very creative and destructive force. And in the wrong hands, it, be it can become very um, out of control and frenzied and chaotic and destructive. Um, but in the right hands, it can be uh, used to create art and food and sustenance. So it's both a giver of life and of order and of age, but also a destructive force. So I find that fucking cool. It's tight. And then with the tree of life, um, we obviously have the cosmic tree or the world tree, which a lot of us are familiar with, um, with Norse mythology, which has three tier systems. There's the underworld, the human world. So this would be the lands between. This would be deep root depths and uh, Noxtella and fucking what's the other one Nakron, and this would be like pharaoh missoula probably maybe the capital would be like down here or something and then like the ancestral spirit would be like down here like doing this thing with its with spreading its horns <laughs> i also really love the tree motif coming out of the ancestral spirits too because the cow hippie people that live down underground, they abstain from using language or metalworking. So they are like cutting off culture and like humanity from themselves and allowing themselves to bud into like these big ancestral spirits that then create trees. So they're like negating humanity in order to pursue becoming a world or becoming a tree, which is fucking also cool as hell. You love to see it here's the here's the outcome if you actually go visit the um the ancestral spirit corpses down in the deeper depths and you hold up a torch next to it they actually have like the color of trees it's like brown branches with like green little leaves which is really cool um another little cool little factoid is that this is the tree of life also known as the philosopher's tree um i want to thank zeo storm for talking about alchemy i will link Zeostorm's video again um and it is depicted as a double helix which the elden stars are also depicted as a double helix you see the elden stars double helix thing here too this is so fucking gnarly i'm so sorry Ooh. <laughs> um and then also the symbol for mercury so the double helix is the symbol for mercury um, Mercury is also the symbol used for intersex people, which is really cool because Michaela's needle has properties of Mercury because it, it separates different alloys from each other, so it can separate gold from other metals from the influence of outer gods. And it has this, um, it has this, this really beautiful double helix going on. Um, and Michaela appears as a female in people's dreams and as a male to people in real life. So that's fucking tight. And Queen Marika and Radagon are also both 
male, female, like a single person. So, you love to see it. I fucking love video games. I hope this was informative and helpful. I'm tired. This is a long video. Okay, bye. Oh yeah, I've... <laughs> I fucking forgot to just say what the fuck is a crucible. A crucible is a metal jar that pours liquid hot metal and the tree represents the age and reality, fabric of reality. And if you pour the hot metal into the Empyrean, that is the place where God's will and man's will gets combined into one will. That would be inside of the body of the Empyrean. Like uh, Queen Marika, when she's like a little, she's like hanging. What I'm trying to say is that the crucible would be the thing that's pouring the metal and the thing, the container that is holding the hot metal. The tree is the fucking crucible. That's all.